today on Divorce Court. I'm here today because I want Andy to put more effort into our relationship. Uh, the biggest pet peeve I have with Krista is she's super picky and nothing I ever do is good enough for her or doesn't ever please her. It does annoy the crap out of me that he's so cheap. Krista likes to just spend our money and doesn't think about the consequences later on. I'm the mean parent. I have to always say no and he always says yes. I am here to fight for my family so hopefully Judge Lynn can help me do that. I feel as if I can't take his words anymore and I need action behind it. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Krista Lois and Andy Zuniga. The two of you have been together for three and a half years. You have one child together. You've come here on a, on a before your vows. You're in love with each other. There are some issues, and you wanted my opinion as to whether or not you should wed. You took my compatibility test, and uh, you gave me your uh, license with permission to tear it up. Should I think your union is ill-advised? Ms. Lois, why don't you start and tell me why you love him, but why you're here. I'm here today, Judge, because I, I hope that you can let me know if marriage is going to be in our near future. Uh, I do love him with all my heart, mm -hmm. and I hope to marry him one day. I just feel as if he falls short on the commitment. Tell me what's going on that makes you believe he's short, fallen short on the commitment. We did have a breakup. Um, Prior to our fourth year being together, he is left. Is this post baby or pre baby? This is this is po uh, pre baby. Pre baby. Okay. Yeah. Or no, post baby. Excuse post baby. Me. After the baby. After baby. Yes. Sorry. Um, well, my understanding is you didn't really, you weren't really ready at the time that you had the baby, but he wanted one at the time. Is that accurate? We we both wanted baby. Uh -huh. I didn't think about having a kid until I met. Andy and mm -hmm. I fell in love with him and I thought let you know he romantic me and we decided to have a baby and we had a baby Can I say this <laughs> ladies <laughs> You don't like a guy and then get pregnant with his baby when you like a guy <laughs> And then you, you you date him and while you date him you watch him mm -hmm. And then if he does good during that period you you, you get engaged Mm -hmm. And you watch him some more. Yeah. And then if he's cool, you marry him. And after you marry him, get him home, and you watch him again. Yeah. <laughs> and then if two, three years into the marriage, my man is handling his business, then he can join your gene pool. <laughs> then and only then. <laughs> I am done preaching. You may continue. I did feel as if we were going to be together for a long time. I do love this man. I fell in love with him. I chose to have a baby with him. It wasn't until we got pregnant was when we literally did go through the worst stage of our relationship. What happened? He uh, became hormonal, because as sometimes guys and girls do when they're pregnant, uh, he, he became hormonal? He <laughs> did. He did become hormonal. He, he would treat me in a way where he promised me before when we were thinking about getting pregnant, oh, I can't wait till you're pregnant. I well, can't wait what would he do? He would ignore me. He wouldn't kiss me, touch me, t uh, hardly told me he loved me. I mean, I was, went back to work when I was pregnant because mm -hmm. we did decide to leave uh, where we were staying at to go stay with his family because he got a job offer, better So you're saying he distanced himself from yeah, you? Yeah, very much so. Mr. Zuniga, what is your, your take on what happened? I was the one that got hormonal. Krista got overly hormonal. Mm -hmm. Because there, I was, was, there was nothing that, that I could do. I couldn't leave the lights on because it would bug her. The light was too bright. I couldn't make no food because it stank too bad. It bugged her. Everyday things just bugged her excessively. Mr. Zuniga, I'm going to tell you something about being <laughs> pregnant. All of your senses are heightened. Thank you. You know what I mean? If anybody peeled a banana anywhere in my 3,500 square foot house, I'm, I was throwing up. It's just, it's, it's just weird. But that's what Mother Nature does to you. So you kind of got to suck that one up, okay? <laughs> I try to for the most that part. One up. In your eyes, what is the main problem between you and Ms. Lewis? Krista, she's a great person, don't get me wrong. It's just her attitude sometimes just makes it difficult to want to be around her, to even stand being around her. Give me an example of some attitude an, that an she gives An example is, you know, we're getting ready to go out somewhere, and she misplaces her brush somewhere on the counter, and she'll go do something else. She'll forget where she has it, and she gets mad 
she starts attacking me like I had something to do with it. Right, it wasn't your fault. Exactly. You didn't move the brush. It was just, you know, yes, she just, exactly. Ms. Lewis, Ms. Lewis. Yes. Do you get mad over little stuff and that spills over into how you treat your man? Sometimes, yeah, but it's the same for him as well. It is. It is exactly the same. He That's tries not to... true. Yes, it is. I say, how was your day, babe? Fine, where's Liam? And, like, he won't... Hey, babe, oh, it wasn't that good. Like, he wouldn't explain himself to me. And, he... and then, then the whole day sour because he's, he's coming home with this demeanor where it seems like you just don't want to be around me and I wasn't the cause for you to be upset. Well, but you're, you're right. making it that I, way. I, 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 I got what you said. I want, I want to talk about a specific issue. And that he said, you wanted to spend extra money to be sure you were in a safe area. But he claimed you were just trying to be lavish. I want to know... He left me telling me the last words he told me was to do it my damn self and to go live your lavish life. When I told him to work a little harder, work, they offered him a job to work 12-hour days. I get that's hard, but I wasn't able to find a job. We were living back at my mom's house. I wasn't okay with living at my mom's house because I felt we needed to have our own place at this point. You I told him to right. accept, and, and I told him to accept to the job. He laughed it off, and then I got angry. We got in a fight, and that's when he and chose to leave. And that's what he said. Mr. Zuniga, your, your, your version of that. That's not entirely event. true. Because one of the issues we had before we moved back into her parents, at my other job, I was always forced for overtime, even on my days off. So she always liked to plan things. And that's why I tell her I don't like planning anything because when you plan things, they just never go through. But did you understand her desire to get out of her, her family member's I, house? I, un I understand and, that. And, 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 and get her own place? You understand that. I understand that, Your Honor. But at the time when we moved over here, the job I was working at was through a hiring agency. So mm -hmm. I wasn't getting paid very much, and I but got they paid every week. Him. Stop! Sorry. See, that's part of your problem right there. Why and that, and that's what I have, to, that's what I have to deal know. with every day on I'm a just daily basis. I'm trying to let you know. But she had a baby, and you wanted to have a baby. Yes. So sometimes you have to step up your game, even if it's not what you want to do. It's what you got to do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Since we've been together, he doesn't take care of himself very well. He doesn't like to shower. Uh, there were, That's there, not true, Your when Honor. When he comes home, he smells like a warehouse. If it's, he got four days off now, because he got a good job, he got four days off now, won't shower for all four days. So you say he's cheap. Explain that to me. When we go into a store, it's always about how much everything costs. It's never because we're there for a costume for our son. Your why Honor, do you have I to look? Hang on. Why do you have to look at the price tags and then say something and scuffle it? Like, we go to work every day to work hard to get what we want. I get penny pinching sometimes has to happen when you're working towards something, but we already have our car. We already have our place. I work a job. He work a job. <clears throat> he works a job. Why must we always be limited? You know, I feel like, you know, he Mr. just... Mr. Zuniga, don't say a word. I'm gonna handle this fight. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you why you need to look at the price tag. Let, let me tell you why you need to always save. Because you're young and you don't have it like that. Yeah. You have to be able to have extra money so you have a cushion when things don't go right. That's what you I tell you. You never know what's going to happen. You got to have have money for the kids when they go to college. It's going to cost a million dollars. You go ahead. Ah, no, 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 no. You are not at a stage in life where the price tag doesn't matter. It <laughs> always matters every day, all the time. You don't work to get the things you want. At this point in life, you're working to get the things you need, yes. and you got to have somebody in the house got a level head yeah. and let you do that. End of story. I don't really talk about the people. <laughs> you say, Mr. Zuniga, she, that she's all... If she doesn't get her way, it's a problem. Explain to me what you mean by that. You know, when we go out for dinner, when we do get a chance to, it's always... I always give her the choice. Where do you want to go? Because she's a picky eater. And she, she can't make up her mind, so she gets mad, and then just things go downhill from there. We just start arguing about it. You guys argue that's about what true. restaurant to go to? No, that's not true. I tell him where we want to go. He tells me, I don't like that place. I don't want to go there. And then I'm just like, well, then stop asking me where I want to go. Why don't you become romantic and pick us somewhere we haven't been, and then maybe we'll like it. Do you do that? Do you say, pick out a place, and then you say, I don't want to go there? Not all the time. Yeah. <laughs> not always. Not all the time, but... I know that argument. My <laughs> husband and I used to have that argument all the time. We'd be sitting there, where do you want to go? Pick a place. I don't, I don't want to go. Yeah. The... That makes you crazy. But, uh, Your Honor, I am, I am romantic, though, but not in the conventional ways that she would like me well, to be. Well, tell me about your unconventional like romantic for, nature. For, for example, one night, you know, I, I went out. 
out of my way and bought like a nice dress shirt, some slacks, and I told her, you know, get dressed, we're gonna go have dinner. And I, she had told me previously before that she'd been wanting to go get steaks. So I figured, hey, why not? So we got dressed up and we went to the restaurant and it was kind of loud and you couldn't really have a intimate conversation, but it was my take on taking her out for steak because it's what she's been wanting for a while. So I figured that would be did, nice. Did you appreciate at least? <laughs> I did, I did. We didn't argue that night. I loved it. I loved the fact that he wore dress shoes. He wore his slacks. He looked handsome. He doesn't, since we've been together, he doesn't take care of himself very well. He doesn't like to shower. Uh, there were, That's there, not true, Your When honor. he comes home, he smells like a warehouse. If it's, he got four <laughs> days off now, because he got a good job, he got four days off now, won't shower for all four days. And I'm like, that's not true. I tell him it's just. Oh, that's cold, Miss Lewis. No, nope, but it's true. Not true. He even went to the extent where he lied to me about it. <laughs> oh my I, God. I was at yeah, my mom's with my son. We were just over there, and I text him, how, how, how's your day? How was work? Because when I was there, when I, I wasn't there when he got home, oh, I was good. I got home, I showered, and I just went to sleep. I come You're home the next it. day and I kiss him. After, I can smell after the warehouse. Working 12 hour I can smell the warehouse on him. Taking and a I'm shower like, Why sometimes is kind of like the last thing on my mind. Sometimes you're just not supposed to say some stuff. That's all I'm going <laughs> to say to Ms. Lois. And now that we've gotten here, I want to know why you want to consider getting married. So I need a professional love and I'm going to go over the compatibility test because you blew it big time. Why is he the man for you? Go. Because he deals with me and he's, he's, he handles me, and he's patient, and he loves me, and I can see it, and he's, he's just a great man to me. In other words, he's the only guy you can find put up with you. I mean, basically, <laughs> that's what you just said. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with you, Ms. Lois. I want you 30 seconds, that's all I'm asking, 30 seconds, and I want you to tell me why Mr. Zuniga above all others, is the man for you. And not just because he's the father of your baby, but him the person. Go. Because he's patient, loving, caring, and he does try. He does try to make me happy, and I see it all the time. And I feel like I lack on appreciating it. And I wish I could show him a little bit more of appreciation. It's just, he's sometimes so stubborn, it's, I don't know, for me, I just, I, I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn. That was the worst profession of love I've ever heard. <laughs> you, you said patient, loving, care, and he does try, and it was downhill from there. I know. You I went just, into negative, I... negative, negative, negative him, negative you, negative him, negative you. Now I'm gonna give you another, I'm gonna give you another 15. Don't mess it up. Why is he the man for you? Go. Because he deals with me, and he's, he's, he handles me, and he's patient, and he loves me, and I can see it, and he's, He's just a great man to me. In other words, he's the only guy you can find put up with you. <laughs> I mean, basically, that's what you just said. <laughs> you get an F. Oh, God. Mr. Zadiga, <clears throat> you see where she messed up, right? <laughs> so you got a chance to come over the top with something really good. Mr. Zuniga, why is Ms. Lois the woman for you? She's a woman for me, Your Honor, because she's a total opposite of me. I, I know I'm not very affectionate or as affectionate as she would like me to be, but I appreciate that she's thoughtful in the sense that she always thinks about things for us to do as a family, which I know I can work on sometimes. And she makes me laugh. She, she's goofy, she's, she's quirky, she's out there as I'm more relaxed and self-reserved. you know, self -reserved. I'm more to myself, and yeah. she helps me come out of my bubble. And she's a great mother to our son. That wasn't bad, not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. You had the advantage of going second, but that was very nice. She said you were thoughtful and makes you laugh, and he, you, you bring out the better parts of him. He says he's reserved and self-contained, self and you let him, you yeah. set him free. That's I mean, man I love. isn't that deep? Yeah. You set him free. <laughs> now, originally I thought you really messed this up, but I see now what you did. When I asked to list five things you don't like about your intended, you cut that sucker in half. You listed five things you didn't like, and then you list listed five things you did like. Yeah. So, which was good. It was nice. You said he was not thoughtful, not romantic. How he talks about money, his clothing choices on date night, Leave something to be desired, apparently. <laughs> but you wanted to stay on the positive, and one of the things she likes is your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I just thought you ought to know. <laughs> <laughs> when you said five things you didn't like about yourself, you said you were too blunt, impatient, and wish I could change my attitude. Now let's, now let's focus on that last one. What attitude is that? I have a bad habit of getting angry over dumb things. I know that. And you're tired of it, aren't you? Yes. And you want to change, don't you? For him, yeah. Because you love him. <laughs> More than anything in this world. And there's my profession of love. There it is. Let me tell you what I think you guys need to do. Ms. Lois, you're a handful, but you're a beautiful, passionate, caring handful. And I think you're the handful that he wants to hold for the rest of his life. I really, really believe that. To be happy, one has to be in command of how they feel. To be happy, one has to be able to stay level even when the world starts to bob and weave on you because the world is going to bob and weave all the time. Things are going to make you angry. Things are going to make you frightened. You're going to lose stuff. He's going to say some dumb stuff. He's young. He's really going to say some dumb stuff. <laughs> and all of that's going to happen. The baby's going to make you tired. And sooner or later, another one's going to come along. And all of those things, if you let your day be the sum total of the stuff that happens to you, you'll be like a ping pong ball all of the time, and you'll never find contentment and peace. Now. Let me tell you something. You are not a victim of who you were born to be. You, that's where you have to start, but you can end any way you want to. Now, I started out when I was nine years old. I took up residence in a closet and wouldn't leave because I believed the world simply wasn't safe. I thought it was an arbitrary, incendiary place that picked people out at random and burned them up alive. I had genetic predisposition to that as well as a daddy in the house that was causing a lot of drama. Best man in the world. He didn't ask to make him bipolar. He just was. I took who I was, scared, reticent, and unhappy, and became who I am. And I, and I, I did it in this, and I, I wrote a book about it. It's called My Mother's Rules. And it's how to, how to take who you are and work your emotions like a job. So you can, you write things down at the end of the day. You debrief what's happening to you. You make, you make decisions about how crazy you're gonna get on any given day before you even start that day. And once you do that, it ain't gonna change in a year. It ain't gonna change in two years. But over time, you'll become a calmer, happier person. And he'll be a calmer, happier dude. In the meantime, in between time, you gotta step up and do the right thing. Nothing makes a, 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 a a flighty chick, more flighty than fear. And fear is lack of money and lack of solid support and, and never threaten to leave as a, as a tool. You got me, Mr. Zuniga? You got a kid yes, together. Sir. You know, grow up, grow into him, enjoy one another. This matter is adjourned. Judge taught me today that I'm going to work better on my attitude and become a better person for my son and my baby, my man. Yeah, Judge also showed me that I need to be more uh, supportive of her and be a little more attentive towards her feelings and not just my own. We hope to get married soon. And on, on Easter Sunday, it'll be the first day that I made it official three years ago. 